Good afternoon. I'm really excited to be doing this. I had a few people asking about lives and also a few people asking about music reading. So I thought, well, maybe it's time to bring the two of them together and uh, just hop on and say hello to you people. So you're going to need a pen and paper. This is the absolute start of it. And I'll probably do more than one lesson, but this is the absolute start. As you jump on, just uh, drop, drop me an emoji to show me that you're here and also maybe let me know something about your day in an emoji. I can't see comments yet, but hopefully, shortly, they'll pop up and uh, we can get started. You will need a pen and paper and it will help massively if you share because I know there are a lot of people that really want to understand the basics of music reading or perhaps in the past they've done a little bit of music reading. Maybe they'd learned a little bit at school or as a child and maybe they've forgotten it. So I thought that today would make a start with a few basics. I'm not going to start with any of that, all that, you know, um, what, what, what's it called? Monomics. I can never say it. Monomics. Monomics. I can't say it. I can never say that word. Um, I, I won't start with all that kind of thing. That's just not the way I'm going to work. It's all about finding landmark notes that you can kind of cling on to. Oh, hi, Gail. Yay, I can see comments now. Hi, Gail. And oh, Sam. It's Sam here. Oh, hello, Sam. Good to see you. Thank you for jumping on. Don't forget to hit the share button and then we can get this out to lots of people because one thing we do have, guys, is time on our hands. We've got time. So we can do those things that we've never got around to doing, like learning to read music. So we're going to make a start in a second. Don't forget, um, give me a little comment when you're on here so I can see that you're here. And don't forget to hit the share button. If people find this useful, I'm just moving around a little bit. If people find this useful, then I will download this and put this onto YouTube too so that it, it can be shared more easily. Um, but first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn you around because... Ah, I'm also going to drop you. Are you still there? I hope that didn't hurt. Um, I'm going to turn you around because, just, just sit there for a second, because I need you to be able to see what's on here. And to do that, I need to turn you around. Bear with Otherwise, it will be the wrong way around. Oh, it's getting stroppy with me because I've rotated my phone. I didn't realise that. Okay, that's fine. Let's put you on there. And then hopefully you can see. Hit the... Um, Hit the, the love emoji if you can if you can just about see that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start with is you need to know the order of notes because it's all very well having all these beautiful keys here. But you need to know the order of notes, which notes are used in music and the order in which they come. And there's a really good news here because there's only seven notes. There's only seven notes. Thank you for, for uh, those love heart emojis. That just reassures me that you're all here and you can see. So, in music, we only use the first seven letters of the alphabet. How easy is that? The first seven letters. And these are the letters that we use. We use A, B, C, D, E, F and G. And once we've got to G, it simply starts again with A, B, C, D, E, and so on. And it does that all the way up the piano. On um, a piano like this, right down at the bottom, that's an A, and it goes all the way up the seven notes, all the way up to the top of the piano, which is a C. So, all I want you to do, and let's make this, let's make this um, interactive. So, it's quite simple with notes. If they're going that way, so if they're going in the direction of the alphabet, then they're going higher. And if they're going that way, so not the, air, the um, order of the alphabet, they're going lower. So I'm going to point to a note and I would like you, put it in the comments because it's important that this is interactive. The best learning would be interactive. So um, in the comments, if I, give, if I point to, for example, an E, can you write in the comments the note that is one note higher than E? So put in the comments one note that is one, a note that is one note higher than E. Let's put it in the comments. I know it will, it, there's a slight delay when it comes to the comments. Which note is one note higher than E? 
this is why we need Facebook to, to sort this out so that the comments are, are immediate. Like, see so who's the first person I, that, that manages to get it in the comments? One note higher than E. Who's going to come up with it? Who's going to be the first one to put it? If you know it, hit that love emoji again, because that will come up fairly quickly. I'm hoping that somebody will come up with it quickly. I bet you're all typing like my going, I've already done it! I've already done it! Oh, for goodness sake! I trust you're all at home today, by the way. I, I trust you're all at home and not prancing around on Brighton seafront like some plonkers. There you are, you see, I will say it. Oh, we've got some love hearts. I can't see the comments. Perhaps it's a problem with the comments. Hopefully, you will have put that the notes one higher than E is an F. Okay? Okay, let's hit the uh, angry face emoji if you got that right. Let's just to differentiate it. Hit the angry face emoji if you got it right. Francesca, woohoo! I can see that you got that right. Brilliant. Okay. So this time, I'm going to start with a C. And I would like you to tell me a note that is two notes higher than C. Two notes higher than C. Let's get it down in the comments. Hopefully all these comments will start coming through, even if I can't see them. Which note is two notes higher than a C? Now, I'm going to give you time to respond, but I'm not going to leave it too long. Yeah, I've got some angry faces. That means that people got it right. I'm not going to leave it too long to respond, but a note that's two notes higher than a C is D, E. So there you are. Two notes higher is an E. Brilliant. If you got that right, hit the angry face emoji once again. If you got that right. Okay. So we know about going higher on the piano. And if you, if, so if I play you the C and then I play you the E, which is higher, hopefully you can hear that. Francesca, go to the top of the class. You're awesome. And she's got that one right too. Okay. Let's go backwards. Now, this is harder because we tend not to work kind of anti-alphabetically. That's not the, the, the correct word, but you know what I mean. Okay, we're going to start with an A. Let's make it a bit trickier. Which note, put it in the comments, please. Which note is four notes lower than A? Which note is four notes lower than A? I'll just give you time to answer. Put it in the comments. Which note is four notes lower than A. That's what an A sounds like. I'm going to play you the note that is four notes lower. Which note will that be? Hopefully you will have written, even though I can't see it in the comments, they'll probably all appear after this live, won't they? A, four notes lower is one, two, three, so A, one, two, three, four. A D. I played the wrong note there. Can you believe that? Honestly, can't get the stuff. So four notes lower is a D. Okay, so hopefully you've got that. Now, the next thing that I said we were going to look at is something called a treble clef. Now, um, in a second you can draw this, but what I'd like you to do is draw five lines like I've done on, on here. Let me move it over then you can see. The comments are in the way. If the comments are in the way, just swipe them to the side and then hopefully you can see exactly what's going on on here. Now, a clef is something that kind of fixes the notes on here. At the moment, these five lines mean absolutely nothing. They will only mean something. They will only represent a letter name when we give them a clef. It kind of fixes things. And this is the archetypal musical symbol. It's the treble clef. Now, I'm going to draw it really quickly to begin with. The treble clef is sometimes known as the G clef, and it tends to be used in the right hand of the piano, but not all the time. It starts on the second line from the bottom. I feel like I'm explaining how to crochet or something. Not that I know how to crochet. It's the second line from the bottom here. I'm going to draw it really quickly to begin with, and then we're going to have a practice at doing it. So you'll know what I mean. This is a treble clef, but you also need to know that it's known as the G clef because in treble clef, this line here represents a G. So let's have a go at drawing it. So first of all, you're going to need to find the second the second line from the bottom. Of course, there are five lines here. So the second line from the bottom, and I'm just going to put a little dot there to remind myself where to start. It would be absolutely amazing if you were to take some pictures and, and show me afterwards. That would be amazing. So second line from the bottom. And we're just going to have a go at, pra at drawing this, which is not always easy. So you need to go round, down to the bottom line, up to the top, 
and then it kind of curls over, comes back down through the middle and you put a little curl on the bottom. So once you know that that's a treble clef, also known as a G clef, then hopefully any time you see a note where that line goes right through the middle, the second line goes right through the middle, that's a G. That's a treble G. It's a really important landmark note. And if you can, if you have access to any music and your any uh, you know sheet music, have a look and see if you can find any of these. It's one of the most common um, uh, notes. It's a bit like recognizing the letter A or E in reading. It's so 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 common. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub that out and I'm going to draw a selection of notes, and you can tell me which ones are G's. So I'm going to draw this, 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 and this. Let me move it up and then you can see. And then hopefully you'll be able to tell me which one is note G. Is it number one, two, three, or four? Which one is note G? Let's see if you can pop it in the comments. Which one is note G? One, two, three, or four. So I'm going to give you a second to pop that in the comments. I don't think I'm seeing all of the comments. Oh, D is answered by Zara. That's good. That was from um, a previous question. Caroline also got that as well. Amazing. Hi, Christine. Hi, Carly. Hi, Lisa. Some people I know here too. That's lovely to see your support. So which one of these was the G? I can tell you, remember that we said that the treble clef is also known as the G clef because it starts on that line. So any note on that line is a G. So it was the fourth one. The fourth note there was a G. So hopefully now you know the order of notes in music. You can recognise and even draw a treble clef. And you know that the note that's on the second line, when we say on the line, it means that the line goes right through the middle. That is the note treble G. If you found this useful, let me just turn your back round. I'm going to turn your back round. Hopefully you can see me. Let me just lift you up a little bit. I can't see you. Oops. I can't see you because I'm not turning all the, um, the screen round again. So hopefully you can see me and not just up my left nostril. Um, if this has been useful for you, then let me know, pop in the comments or whatever, if you would like me to do a subsequent lesson leading on from the landmark G that we've been looking at today. By all means, go away, practice drawing the treble clef. Remember that it's also known as the G clef because it starts on that second line. Next thing I will go in, into is I will show you another landmark note and then how to start to read outwards from that G. What I use is a system kind of um, based on intervals, so based on the, the distance between notes. It can be tricky sometimes. If you learn all these, you know, the things you did in school, every good boy deserves football, that's great, that's all very well and good, but that doesn't help you to read music with fluency. What we will do is get you to recognise these notes, to connect them to the piano, and then to read with increasing fluency. So hopefully music starts to make some kind of sense to you. And then the best thing, connect that with sound. Music's not some kind of theoretical endeavour. It always connects with the sound. I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comments if it was. Hit the share button if you think that other people that you know would like to leave, learn to read music. And uh, hopefully I'll be back fairly soon with the next lesson in how to read music. Thank you so much for watching.